In this video, we are looking at how to determine whether a precipitate will form given the concentrations of two aqueous solutions that contain ionic compounds. Okay, let's go through this example together. So we have 100 mils of 0.0015 molar calcium chloride and 75 mils of 0.008 molar potassium sulfate mixed together. It gives us the KSP of calcium sulfate and he's asking, will a precipitate be formed? So first of all, step number one would be to write a fully balanced equation. We actually don't even need to do that for this because we've already been told what the precipitate is gonna be. The precipitate is calcium sulfate. So we can go straight into writing a half equation for that. After we've done that, step number two would be to write our expression for Q. Now step number three is to determine the concentration of each of our species in our expression. So let's start with the calcium. What is our concentration of the calcium? Now to work that out, we need to use this formula. C1V1 equals C2V2. So our initial concentration times volume equals our final concentration times volume. So we're looking to find out what is our final concentration and we've been given all of the others or at least can work them out. So for calcium, our calcium ions, our initial concentration is here. These are our calcium ions with the calcium chloride. So it's 0 0.0015 multiplied by the initial volume, which is 100 mils. We're trying to calculate the concentration and our final volume is the 100 mils plus the 75 mils of the potassium sulfate. So our final volume is 0 0.175. Let's do the same thing for our sulfate ions. So our C1, our initial concentration of the sulfate ions is 0 0.008 times the initial volume, which is the 75 mils, um, divided by the final volume, which is going to be the same for both of them. So that's the 0 0.175. And that gives us our concentration of 0 0.00343 molar. So now that we've got our concentrations, we can sub those back into our expression for Q. Which gives us this value here. Now, our very last step is to compare Q with our KSP. So here is our Q, here is our KSP. So our value for Q is less than our KSP value. And that means that no precipitate will form. Here we've got another example and it is a little bit more complicated than the last example. So we've got 70 mils of 0.1 molar lead nitrate added to 30 mils of 0.1 molar sodium iodide. Will a precipitate form? So the first thing we need to do is write a full equation. The reason we're writing a full one for this example and not the last one is because we need to identify which um, product is actually going to give us our precipitate. So we start with our lead nitrate and our sodium iodide. Okay, so using your solubility rules, you'll be able to see that the lead iodide is what forms our precipitate. Um, if you've done the prac on this, then you'll know that this is that really awesome yellow color precipitate that's formed. So our net equation is going to be um, our lead iodide breakdown. 
Now, the KSP for this is on your chemical data sheet that you'll be given in your exam. So you can just pull that straight from there. Our expression for Q is this. And now we need to calculate our concentrations. So we're going to use our same formula as before, the C1V1 equals C2V2 to calculate those. So let's start with the lead. So now we sub that, those concentrations we've just calculated back into our Q. And we get the answer is 6.3 times 10 to the minus five. And now we wanna compare that, our Q value with our KSP. So if we compare our value of Q with our KSP, so Q is actually bigger than our KSP. And that means that a precipitate will form in this case.